let's talk about the concept of a geometry. We use geometries tons in three-dimensional, well, even in two dimensions. We, we have a set of vertices, and we have a set of indices, and, and what do those vertices and indices represent? In this case, we have a triangle. The triangle is our simple geometry. There's nothing real special here. This triangle is made up of three vertices. Three vertices. Each vertex is made up of a position color, position color, position color. This triangle is also made up of indices. If I scroll down here, you'll see the index data. So I want to abstract a little bit and put this geometry info in its own class or structure so we can say, hey, something else, give me a geometry. Let me send that geometry down to OpenGL so that I can render it to the screen. Control-Alt-L. I'm going to right-click on here. Add new item off the screen. Sorry. I'm going to call this shape data. This is going to be a structure, a simple structure that will store our shape data, our vertices, and our indices. Pound pragma once. I'm going to do a new vertical tab group so we can keep the OpenGL stuff off to the left there. Struct shape data. We need a pointer. To the vertices, so vertex pointer, we need to pound include. Actually, we don't need a pound include. We can do a forward declaration class vertex. The forward declaration is only necessary when ha storing a pointer. Okay, I'm just, all pointers are the same size. They're four bytes. So I don't need to tell what a vertex is actually made of. We'll say vertices. And then I want num vertices, which should be a... a U, U int. So let's pound include gl slash glue, I believe it is, that has the gl u int num vertices. We also need the indice data, so gl u short pointer indices. And I'll say gl u int again num indices. So now the shape data is an abstraction away from all this headache where we can just say, well, there's vertices and there's indices. This is the number of vertices, number of indices. So I want to get this incorporated over here. And I don't want to generate the triangle here. I want something else to create the triangle. So control alt l right click on primitives, add new item. Actually, I'm going to say add class. Add class. C++ class, click Add, and we shall call this Shape Generator. And all that's unchecked. Finish, and we get a header file and a CPP file, and Visual Studio being a little bit too ambitious by adding a constructor and deconstructor. I'll take that off. The first function I want to add will be Shape Data Make triangle. And let's make this static. These will just be static helper functions inside of our class. We need to pound include primitives shape data so that we can return a shape data. Let's go define this function over here. We don't need to declare it as static because we declared it as static already in the header file. So then in here we can say shape generator Maybe I should have called it shape maker. Make triangle. And then basically I just got to copy this code and paste it over here. So let's actually let's cut it. Control X, Control V. And we need vertex in here now. So pound include vertex or primitives. Primitives vertex. Because we're actually using vertex now. Looks like we need GLM. So pound include. GLM, GLM, and I actually like to include my middleware before my stuff. So here's the middleware, here's my stuff, because I don't want anything in my stuff, any names or things like that, colliding or messing around with the middleware. Chances are it won't, but that's just me being probably a little bit too overprotective. And then the index data, I'm going to grab this, put the index data here. And we need a shape data to return, so shape data. I'll call him ret. And right here I'll say return ret. 
Rhett is my friend. Actually, I did have a friend named Rhett growing up. Now, this data right here, we've defined it on the stack. All this data is sitting on the stack, and all this data sitting on the stack. So I can't just naively say Rhett dot vertices gets my try. Because once we return, once we hit this closing curly brace, when we try to use ret over here, or the value, the shape data that we shall return to this area of code, uh, then this data is gone. It's not on the stack anymore. So we actually have to throw some memory on the heap, or allocate some memory on the heap, and then copy this data out onto the heap. So we first need to get the number of vertices. Ret dot num vertices gets the size of my try divided by the size of my try and if you haven't seen this trick before what this does is says give me the size of this array and this will return the number of bytes in the array so all these are float 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 float, float, float. all these floats times the size of a float but then I say divide it by the first element in the array so I'll get all these bytes divided by the size of one of these will give me three so num vertices in this case should be three. I could just say three out here, but then what if I want to go modify this data? I want the rest of my code to just fall into place. Now I can say ret dot uh, vertices gets new vertex array ret dot num vertices. Now that I know the number of vertices I have, then we'll do a mem copy. The destination I want to copy to is the memory I just allocated out on the heap. The source is my try that is sitting on the stack, and it's going to be the number of bytes that is sitting inside of my try. So copy this many bytes from here to here. Indices will pretty much work the same. I'll say ret dot indices, or we didn't need to do num indices. Num indices gets the size of the indices array divided by the size of the first element in the indices array, and I'm going uh, I can already tell I'm going to get bugged because I have to say size of, size of, size of. I use this trick a lot, so let's just turn this into a preprocessor macro at the top of our file. Pound define, define, num array elements. A, A will be our array. I'm going to copy this and paste it here and put A there and A there. And so now I can say num array elements of my try, and the preprocessor will replace this with size of, and then put the name my try right here, my try right here. That'll solve this duplicate problem, so then I don't have to say size of, size of, size of. I've factored the code a little bit, even though it's a preprocessor. Uh, macro. So we have num indices, ret dot indices gets new glu short, array ret dot num indices, and same trick again, mem copy to ret dot indices, copy the value of indices that's sitting on the stack for now, and that will be the size of indices, like so, and then return ret. So let's see if we can call this and see if it actually works. Let's go back over here and pound include primitives. What I, didn't I call it shape generator? Oh, it didn't end up in the primitives folder. Duh, I'm going to drag that up there. And now I can say shape generator H. And then I can say shape data. Try, get shape generator. Please make me a triangle. And then, the font's a little small. Let's try to scroll in here a little bit. GL buffer data. It's not the size of my try anymore. It will be try dot. I don't have a function to tell me the, the number of bytes I need. So let's add a function to shape data to tell us how many bytes are we going to need for the vertex buffer and the index buffer. Uh, but before we do that, let's actually add a constructor here to initialize everything to either null or zero. So vertices will be null, and num vertices will be zero, and indices will be null, and num indices will be zero. And that's nice and safe, just in case we 
mess something up and don't allocate these. And then down here, I think this this argument right here, it's a, it's a size i pointer. What's a size i pointer? TL size i pointer, F12 on that to go look at its its uh, definition. F12 is not working. Whatever. Uh, array buffer, not array buffer size, vertex buffer size. This will be a const function. We'll write it in line because this is just a simple helper struct. And gl size i pointer again index buffer size const. Go down here. And then let's look at these si the size i pointer. Click there, F12. It's a pointer diff t. What's that? It's an int. <laughs> uh, whatever. Okay. Fancy way of saying int. All right. Well, you shall return the number of vertices, num vertices, times the size of a single vertice. Okay. Or vertex in this case. And then... Uh, you know what, though? Now that we're taking the size of it, I can't forward declare it. Although, because the compiler's like, eh, I don't. Well, what is the size of this? So I shouldn't forward declare this anymore. Pound include and primitives vertex. And then index buffer size will be the same thing. Num indices times the size of. What is an indice? It's a GL U short. Like so. So I think we're. Probably good there. Control Shift S to save all of our files. Go back over here, and I can say try for the for the buffer data. The size of the buffer is try dot vertex buffer size. And then the actual data will be try dot uh, vertices. And then same thing with the indices. Try dot index buffer size. Try dot indices. Okay, I think we should be good. So I know that was a whirlwind tour. I'm up to about 13, 14 minutes on this video, but but uh, I want I wanted to centralize this shape data into a shape generator because we're going to generate several shapes. We'll do a cube. That's that's our goal, so we can render that three-dimensional cube under the screen, and then we'll do other cool shapes. I'm going to control a 5 this to see if it still builds, and if it does build, do we get our shape? It doesn't build. GLM's not namespace. Why did that? Oh, that worked before, didn't it? Because we had vertex here, and then we included GLM before vertex. So in this particular compilation unit, we could get away with not including GLM over here. But now we have more than one compilation unit, and it just so ha well, we include GLM there before vertex as well. But in shape data, well, shape data doesn't have a CPP file somewhere. <laughs> this is messing up. In one of the compilation units, pound include GLM slash glm hpp control shift b to build syntax error miss did, did i oh of course all right control shift b build succeeded of course once you build it's perfect right now let's control five no oh we still got a triangle very good but we should clean up after ourselves going over here didn't we call new here and new here? So we need to delete that memory, otherwise we're going to leak it. We leak it at the end of here because try is pointing at this memory, but then we let go of try and we've just leaked all this memory. So you may think, oh, that's easy. Let's add a destructor. If you're new or naive to C++, you say, let's add a destructor. Shape data. And in here... We'll say delete uh, indices, or no, no, vertices. Let's do vertices first. Delete indices. And then num vertices gets num indices gets zero. And then if I control a five, this, we might get lucky. This might still work. Bill, ah, it still worked. Ah, okay, well, there's something. I don't want to get into all the 
nitpicky details about the heap and stuff. But essentially, in Shape Generator, we create this ret object, and and believe me, if I don't fix this, it'll, this will eventually bite me. I create this local ret object, which is only visible, or its lifetime and its visibility is between this curly brace and this curly brace. Well, when I return ret, C++ will make a copy of ret for me to get right here, and that copy will be called try, and then ret's destructor will execute right here and delete the memory before I actually send it down to OpenGL. But it turns out since we don't allocate any new memory, we don't go stomp on that memory, uh, on memory management, all that kind of stuff. Since we don't do anything new out on the heap after that, we're actually lucky and the memory's still there in its original state, uh, but technically we shouldn't be using it because we already deleted it because the destructor executed. So I want to, uh, what we're doing is called a shallow copy. You can go look at my videos, a deep copy, shallow copy, and the differences between those. But for now, just to get around this, I want to be explicit about when I delete stuff. So I'm actually going to say void, clean up, and I shall allow the shallow copy from here over to here and then once we're over here we still have our data on the stack because we didn't call cleanup over here ret's gone but try is now in charge of this memory we allocated out on the heap and so once we send the data down i can say hey try we clean up after yourselves and control f5 build start build succeeded triangle and we're cleaning up so i'm feeling better about that and we're getting closer to rendering a three-dimensional cube onto our two-dimensional screen.